Okay, welcome. This is our notes on mole and molar mass to start our stoichiometry um, unit. If you haven't already, go ahead, open our classroom, um, click on classwork. It's going to be for unit eight stoichiometry. And you wanna scroll down and find the mole and molar mass notes. And you will have your Google doc there for your Cornell notes. Make sure you're adding highlights and a three to five sentence summary um, before submitting. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so if you didn't already know it, funny thing is there's actually a mole day and it's October 23rd. And this is our little mole. It's not talking about um, the actual animal mole, but we'll get into what we call a mole here in chemistry. Okay, so our essential question, what is a mole and how is it used? So we'll go through it and you're gonna learn how to do a, a molar mass con um, calculation here as well. All right, if you want to, you can go into your chemistry book. Um, page 290 um, has a reading about what is a mole and 290 to 296, uh, mass of a mole of an element, which I'll go through here, and how to figure out the mass of a mole of a compound. So if you learn more by reading, you can also read those pages in your textbook. Okay, let's get started. All right, so a mole, what is it? It's not a furry thing that lives in the ground. That's not what we're talking about here in chemistry. So the definition of a mole is it's actually 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd single things. So it's like 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd eggs, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd pencils, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd erasers, anything you want to talk about. Now, here in chemistry, of course, we call it Avogadro's number. It is who um, created it. And it is just a number. That's all it is, okay? And it's just a number. And then, of course, we always add some kind of unit to it. We abbreviate it MOL. So you'll see me do that a lot. So as you can see here, um, it is 6.0235, if you want to go a little farther, times 10 to the 23rd. And here in chemistry, we actually use it for atoms, okay, most of the time, okay? And so when we're talking about the mole, it's usually used with atoms like copper, carbon, silver, okay? And also molecules, uh, methane or water. We could say one mole of methane one mole of water, and that would be um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water or methane, or even atoms of copper or carbon. Um, sometimes you might hear it say formula unit. We won't do too much here this year. You may also hear it um, about it that it says it's based on the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. Remember when we talked about isotopes way back when, and last semester, and we said there's all these different um, elements that have different number of neutrons, which gives us a different weight. And so one of the most common one is carbon-12 on our Earth. And so they base this number that actually one gram of carbon, when they weighed it out, they took one gram of carbon-12, they weighed it out, got one gram, and someone there started counting the number of atoms in one gram of carbon. And in one gram of carbon, there is actually 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And so that's actually where Avogadro's number started to take um, shape, okay? So here's some examples here. So one mole of sodium, okay, that's on our periodic table, Na, is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. And that's how we just kind of make things um, be the same. And because sodium is going to have a different weight on the periodic table, um, it still has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. So we just kind of easily make it a single number that we can use to compare each of them to each other. Such as one mole carbon will still have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And one mole oxygen will again have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. They will have different grams. One gram of sodium, okay, is still gonna have or one mole of sodium will always have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, but it may not be one gram, like in carbon, okay? So 
let's go ahead and talk about think about this a little bit more. How big is a mole? How big is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? Well, if you think about it, while a dozen eggs will make a nice omelet, a mole of eggs will actually fill all of the oceans on the earth more than 30 million times over. Think about it. It would take 10 billion chickens laying 10 eggs per day, more than 10 billion years to lay a mole of eggs. That is how many eggs one mole of eggs would be, okay? And so why is the mole important? Why do we need it? I just told you that we use it to compare different atoms on the periodic table. And we actually use it in the coefficients. Remember those coefficients that we were using for the chemical balancing? Well, they actually mean something and they actually mean moles. So like in this equation that you guys are used to seeing, um, the two here would mean I have two moles of hydrogen. Nothing here means I have one mole of oxygen and here I would have four moles of water, okay? And it's actually unbalanced, but it was just to show you the coefficients, okay? All right, so if we have that, then how about molar mass? We talk about molar mass a lot. What would be the molar mass of an element? And it's very important to understand that one mole of anything has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, but it's not gonna have the same mass because everything has, remember, different numbers of neutrons, different number of protons. So each one is going to have a different mass. So a mole, when you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of something, you're either going to have it's very light or very heavy. Such in hydrogen has very low numbers of protons and neutrons, and that's why its molar mass, which is on the periodic table, is 1.01 grams. So one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 grams, but it still has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, okay? All right, so the definition of molar mass is it is the mass of one mole of anything in grams, Okay. And so we use the periodic table to get the mass of one mole of any element. Okay. So let's go ahead and look. And if you have your, um, if you don't have your interactive um, periodic table, I'm going to switch back and forth between that and this um, presentation so that you can see where I'm getting it on the periodic table. All right. So let's go ahead and look at these. So we're going to find the molar mass of sodium chloride, which is just table salt here. Okay. And then you're going to Multiply the number of moles times the mass on the periodic table, and it's going to equal the mass in grams. And use the periodic table to find the mass of one mole. So as you notice, we have how many sodiums and how many chlorines. So I believe you're saying one sodium and one chlorine. So for sodium, I'm going to go ahead and go to my periodic table here, and I'm going to find the mass of a sodium atom, okay? And as this is loading here for just a second, all right, so here's our periodic table. And if I look at sodium, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. So it brings it up for me, hopefully. It's really slow today, but here's our sodium. And notice, remember that, that mass on the bottom. And remember, this is where we had the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, but it's 22.99, okay? This is what we call the molar mass. And it's also called the atomic mass unit. Um, it is the mass of sodium when I gather 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, it's going to weigh 22.99 grams. So this is what I would put in with my molar mass when I'm calculating it, okay? So if I look at that, okay, I have one sodium atom and I'm gonna times it times 22.99. Nine, nine. And that's going to give me 22.99 grams for sodium in this um, molecule, okay? And now I'm going to have to go back and look for chlorine. So if I go to chlorine here, okay, I can see here, chlorine's over here, it's number 17, okay? And it has a molar mass of 35.45. So one mole of chlorine is going to weigh 35.45 five grams. Or you could say 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms is going to weigh 35.5 
grams, okay? And so we're going to put that in there. 1 times 35.45 will get me 35.45. But notice it's together. So we still need to add them together to get our total mass in grams. And if we add them together, we should get 58.44 grams. So if I took one mole of sodium chloride or salt, one mole is going to weigh 58.44 grams. And if I weigh out 58.44 grams, I will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of salt. And that's a lot of salt. So don't put that on your food. <laughs> okay. All right, let's look at another one. So let's find the molar mass of sugar. This is actually um, C6H12O6 is the equation, is the molecular formula for sugar, okay? And again, we're gonna use our periodic table. So hopefully you can see, I have C6H12O6. And notice the six is here. So there's actually six carbons. So I'm gonna take six, okay? Number of moles, I have six of them, okay? And I'm gonna times it times the mass on the periodic table. So I'm gonna go back to my periodic table. I'm gonna find carbon, okay? Find carbon here again, and carbon, one mole of carbon is gonna be 12.011 grams, okay? So I'm gonna go back here, and I'm going to make it, put that in there, and I'm gonna do six times 12.011, and that should get me, and we'll figure that out in a minute. And then we have 12, and if you go back on the periodic table, Hydrogen weighs 1.008, and so you do 12 times 1.008. Again, I got that off the periodic table, okay? And so you can see here that hydrogen is up at the top. If you click on hydrogen, I look at that bottom number, the atomic mass unit, and it's 1.008. So that is what I will use to times how many I have, okay? And then oxygen, if you looked it up, it's going to be 15.999, and there's six of them here, so six times 15.999. If I multiply it out, I'll get 72.066 grams of carbon in that molecule. I'll get 12.096 grams of hydrogen and 95.994 grams of oxygen. I will add them all together to get my total um, molar mass of sugar as 180.156 grams. And if I weighed out 180.156 grams of sugar, I would have one mole of sugar, it's a lot of sugar, and in that sugar, I would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms of sugar, okay? All right, so, I want you to go practice for a little bit. So I want you to pause this video. I want you to go find out what, how much is a mole of fluorine atoms is. So that's in grams. Remember you're looking it up on the periodic table in grams. How about a mole of potassium bromide? So it says moles, but should a mole of potassium bromide atoms is how much it would that be in grams? Calculate the molar mass. And how about a mole of sodium carbonate here? I want you to take a minute, just do it on a piece of paper, see how you're doing, and then come back here, unpause this, and check your answers. All right, hopefully that you are done. And so you should have found that a mole of fluorine is 18.998 grams off the periodic table. A mole of potassium bromide is 119.002 grams. And a mole of sodium carbonate is 105.99 eight grams, okay? If you're still having trouble, please, please, please get a hold of me and I'll help you practice. And here's our little cat. I love this little thing. Do you have a mole problem? Call Avogadro at 602-1023. Ha ha, funny. All right, that is the end of our molar mass notes. So go ahead and process your notes. Highlight any important notes. Make connections to any of your notes in the left-hand column. Write any questions you may have in the left-hand column. And then use your highlights, connections, and questions for your summary. And then write a three to five sentence summary. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.